you know, it's a really chilly night. And while I was just standing at the edge of the street looking at the sky, I was just taking a gander at this house that I'm living in. And it just made me think briefly about how different it is from other houses that I've stayed in. Then also briefly, I was thinking about how it's been a while since I made a night video. But in this video, let's talk about some differences between American homes and this German home. This is obviously not gonna be a video that you haven't seen before, because I know there's many of videos out there that's probably talking about a lot of the things that I'm gonna go over in this one. But the first thing, like this right here, like this window, this window has a handle right here that has two positions, well, three positions, I guess. You have the position that it's in right now, right? Straight up and down, and that's pretty much the window being closed. So when you move the window to this straight position, straight lateral position, you can see that it opens. I have plants in front of it, so I can't open it fully. But you can see that it opens so that you can have it pretty much opened all the way and you can get as much air as you want. It leaves a huge open space here, leading straight to outside, air getting in, and it's just really nice. Now the third position is, you guessed it, straight up to where this happens. It tilts. So now you can still get fresh air, as you can see, but you don't have to have it all the way open. It minimizes the chances of bugs getting in, adds a little bit of safety, but you can still get the fresh air and still have your window partially closed. You get kind of a surprise when you first start messing with that lever, trying to figure out the window. And sometimes you feel like you're breaking it and you feel like it's gonna fall on you. But after you get used to it, you just realize the brilliance in it. But speaking of brilliance, here, let's also take a gander at this flat rope here. Now, this is part of the Rolladen system. And what this does is actually, let me show you. If you can see it, yeah, you can see, you can see the shutter, the rolling shutter come down. Just like that. And look at that. You're now protected from elements like hail and things like that. Your window is nice and protected. Also, if you're like a day sleeper, this really shuts out all of the daylight. Like I'm talking about all of the daylight. Like you won't get any daylight when this thing is fully closed. Another brilliant, brilliant thing that I just did not see in a stateside home. Some of these come in automatic, mine don't. It'd be nice to have automatic. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you is the differences in the plugs that we use and the differences in the sockets. I happen to have some right here. Now, as you can see, all the plugs over here come with these two prongs that you see, right? Back in the States, we have these two prongs. Now there is a three prong setup. I rarely see any more here because I started phasing them out, but it looks kind of like that. So you have the regular two that I just showed you that they have stateside, and then you have this third one. And I think that's for grounding, I'm not sure. But like I said, this is an adapter. And if you take a look, these are the sockets. If you can, two prong holes here for the prongs of the plugs to go into them. I think these are so much better because they're not as flimsy. You can see these, these are really thin. And believe it or not, these are easy to bend. If you pull them out the wrong way, you will bend these, especially since the sockets in the States are flat. They aren't recessed into the wall like these are, which is absolutely brilliant, is it not? Let's move on. Yo, do y'all see that motherfucking thing? Look at that. Oh my gosh. Bro, listen, I don't even come down here often, but I'm doing it for you guys. these are the tanks that are in my basement so basically these hold all the oil that's going to supply um, the house with heating here's the unit that actually does all the work with the hot water and all that stuff um, but this is the oil that's used and this costs a lot of money each year to keep these things filled not a fan not a fan of them at all I know in some places in the states they do have these but I've never ever had to deal with tanks full of oil in a stateside home that I've stayed in. Never, never, ever. Another difference between an American home and uh, a German home. Let's get out of here. Ooh, I had to 
take care of him before I walk past. I was not about to chance it. Never know what kind of thing will try to jump on you, man. As we make our way to the bathroom. Now here are a few differences I know everybody brings up and it's the fact that in the States, there is usually a tank in the back of the commode that keeps a certain amount of water in it for actually flushing the, flushing the toilet. When you hit the lever, it actually depletes the tank and that's the water that's used to push everything down. Directly after that, the water fills back up and basically it's just always a supply of water waiting to flush everything down. I don't know which one is better. It doesn't matter to me as long as the stuff gets flushed. The next thing about these toilets is sometimes you'll have wall units that have buttons. You've seen other people do these videos where they have the bigger button and the little, little button. Uh, one for the, the huger uh, amounts of content to go down and the other for the smaller amount. Basically number one and number two, or big number twos, or even bigger number twos. And then you hit one of those depending on what's going on <laughs> in, in the toilet, all right? The last thing with the toilets, sometimes the actual commode has a shelf, like right about here. And this hole is actually pushed forward so that this shelf, it actually collects the contents like a platter. Like the platter is holding whatever you had to give it right there waiting for you to look at it. Those are pretty strange. I like these better, like, way better but yeah that's the third difference when it comes to toilets let's go the next difference is also in the bathroom and it's in the shower now these shower heads are quite common here in germany back in the states what we usually have is a fixed shower head where it's fixed to the wall and it sticks out and you can just adjust the tip the nose of it um but here in germany they're quite commonly known to have these shower heads with the actual like hose situation. That way you can kind of do whatever you want with it. You don't always have to stay in the same place in the shower. Sometimes this comes in handy, sometimes it's kind of annoying, but that's something that I had to get used to um, when I first came here. I was always looking for the fixed shower head, just because I was used to it. Not that I felt like I was missing something, but, but there you go. The next thing I want to bring up is the actual build of the places here. If you Try to get through any German wall here, you will notice that they are rock solid. These are hard, hard walls. It's hard to get anything through these. You're gonna have to use a drill or something. And over here, we have this clock that we had to get up here and we didn't wanna start putting holes in these solid ass walls. So we basically just started using these things. These things are removable. You can hang things on them and stuff like that. We just got smaller ones and use them for the clock. But uh, that, that's, the, the, that's the route we chose when it comes to these very, very solid, rock hard, solid walls here. That's not something I'm used to back in the States. They're there, but they're rare. You can find a hard, solid rock concrete brick house if you do some searching and if you have, and if you have it built that way, but rarely is it that way by default. Most of the walls, at least the inside of the wall, sometimes the walls on the outside are made of concrete and brick, but the inside have a layer of drywall and stuff like that that you can basically put your fist through. It's a really big difference between American homes and German homes. Okay, so the lighting is terrible in here, but I didn't plan on making a video, so it is what it is. American homes come with closets installed as part of the house. Here in Germany, that's not the case. What you would have to do is get shrunks, Kleider shrunks, separate. And these pretty much house all your clothes and things like that. And if you can't tell, this one is actually pretty big. So that's a separate side over there. That's a center with the two mirrors. We just basically put like blankets and stuff in there in storage. Um, washcloths and things, towels and stuff we put down there. That's where I keep all my stuff. In this room, you can see we had to do the same thing. These are actually pretty useful and you can get however many you want. In the States, you're at the mercy of whatever came with the place. So you can extend these however much you want. Now the drawback is obviously that you'll have less space in the room, but the option to expand is there. And here's another one. It's a matching one. We bought them the same and put them in both rooms. So here's another one and I'll show you the ones in the office. So here are the ones in the office. They're behind the screen. I, I'm using this at the moment, so it's covering them up. But I have three. One, two, three. Both have double opening sides and both have things in them that are of use. And these come in handy for storing stuff. Lots of camera equipment in them, lots of other stuff that needs to be stored. 
These come in handy. And like I said, there's three here, so you can expand if you want to. It just means less space in the room you're expanding in. Shrunks. And speaking of space, that leads me to another thing. German homes typically have massive amount of rooms. You can find up to eight rooms in one house to rent at times. And yes, all those rooms would be yours. Like they all belong to the same house. When I first got here and was scouting places, I couldn't believe all the rooms that came in some of these places. The drawback to some of them is that some of the rooms are tiny. So technically they don't consider them bedrooms, but there are a lot of rooms nonetheless. If you find the right one, like my office downstairs could be a bedroom, it's big enough, but it's my office. But that's what I'm saying. If you find one with rooms like that, where you can kind of manipulate it and make bedrooms out of them, you could get lucky. That's a huge, huge difference. In the States, you get the certain amount of bedrooms you get and that's it. Unless you're gonna be paying way more than you think you're paying. Each room adds to the floor plan of the home, which adds to the price of it. So that's a huge, huge difference between German homes and US homes. And lastly is beds. I brought this bed with me when I came from the States. This is a king size bed, an American king size bed. And I'm reluctant to get rid of it because I won't be able to find another one like it. Here in Germany, I don't know the measurements and things like that, but most beds are two smaller beds just kind of pushed together. I ain't saying that's a good or a bad idea, but that's what most beds are like here. This king size bed, like it's pretty big. You probably can't tell from the video, but it's pretty big. I mean, if I sprawl out over it like this, you see how much space there is. It's a pretty big bed. And that's just not something I'm willing to give up anytime soon. I'm probably gonna hang on to this bed as long as I can. I don't know how long mattresses last nowadays, but I'm gonna run this one until it's no good. That's how much I'm willing to hang on to this American king size bed. And the differences in beds, the two smaller ones here in Germany compared to one huge size in the States is my last difference between German and American homes. There's so many things that I could compare, but like I said, I didn't even plan on making a video tonight. This was made really quick on my phone, just so you guys can see the differences that I see. So I thank all of you guys for watching this run and gun video. Check out some of my other videos. Join the nation if you haven't, and I'll talk to you in the next one.